Gan shalom akyam. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Give honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who teach and rule well, and shalom to the sincere akyam from this truth and sincerity. Shalom. In this video, we're going to the new covenant that the Heavenly Father, you know, is going to establish with the nation of Israel, which in this day and age consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but also those that are scattered among the heathen nations, looking like the heathen nations, but whose lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to their father's seed line. Those are the true, you know, biblical, you know, Hebrew Israelites in this day and age. And, you know, if we, you know, go back into the history, you know, we read about, you know, the covenant that the Heavenly Father made with those people. <clears throat> and, you know, that is something that we're also going to lightly touch upon. Um, and, um, you know, I want to focus, you know, on that new covenant and a little bit on promises that the Heavenly Father made towards their people, man. But this is uh, Hebrews chapter 8, starting at verse 7, which the title of that paragraph reads, A New Covenant, which the word covenant, you know, goes back to an agreement. So we, you know, when we go back, you know, into the history, you know, in, in Exodus 9, which we're going to touch upon as well, you know, we agreed, you know, to, um, to what the Heavenly Father you know, spoke through Moses, man, you know, that we would, you know, keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, you know, and uh, that uh, through that, you know, we will be, be blessed, basically, you know, that's the agreement that we, um, that we made, you know, which actually that was an agreement that we made with, with death as well, because of the nature of the flesh, you know, that we have, you know, which we inherited from, you know, Adam. It was impossible for us, you know, to to really keep him to to a hundred percent, you know. Therefore, we are also in the predicament that we are in right now upon this earth, man. We are the lowest of the lowest upon this earth, you know. Our people don't even know who they are no more, which sometimes that's really messed up, man. You know, sometimes when you, for me, look, I I I I grew up amongst Edomites because I look like a you know so-called Edomite, right? And um, or so-called white person, you know. But uh, <clears throat> sometimes I really come across jakes that are really sick, man, sick in the mind. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, I came across one that uh, that wasn't working. You know, was was basically you know trying to buy beer with these uh, these cans that are refundable for fifteen cents. You know, had some some kind of strange bumps on his body, his hands, and face. Being young, today I was working, you know, this Jake from uh, from from uh, Cape Verde, you know, spoke to me, you know, and he even he even said he, he he's not a hundred percent, you know, and uh, he spoke to me about what he did and you know that he had no friends no more, they all died, basically from the life that they lived, you know, that he used to you know do things with drugs and things like that, and that he's now working a, a honorable job with his hands, man. You know, on a on a ship, basically, basically in the port. You know, and um, I didn't even say much, but I could see that he was lost, man. He was lost in his mind. You know, and um, he told me like, "Hey, man," but at least you listened to me, man. And he he could really see that I was listening to what he said, and you know, that's the state that our people are in right now, man. And sometimes I'm confronted with that, and it makes me sad, man makes me really sad when I'm literally confronted with that. But that's the state that our people in because we transgressed the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, our people, you know, we were created by the Heavenly Father actually to be, you know, on top of all these other nations, man. But through the way that the old covenant was set up and the nature of our flesh, you know, it was impossible for us to obtain it through the keeping of the law, man. 
That's why back in the days, a lot of our people, they were trying to focus so much on the law, the law, the law, the law. But the promise that the Heavenly Father gave unto our forefathers was never intended to be obtained through the keeping of the law, man. You know, because that was something that, that that only would have been afterwards revealed, man. Like, hey, Galatians is going to say, man, it's already on deck. You know, so Yaritaza, man, tune in and Yaritaza is going to be an edifying video, man. So this is Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7. It reads, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. You know, and, and, and truth be told, you know, the, the agreement itself, there was not, I don't know, I have a runny nose, but the agreement that we, basically the agreement, the covenant, you know, there was nothing wrong with that, man. It was us there was something wrong with man because it's going to say in the second uh, in, the, in the next verse it's going to say for finding fault with them with who with us he said behold the days come said the lord jehovah when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah and this covenant is yet to be put into place but right now we're in that period in between the period in between wherein we have Yahweh Shai as our mediator to function as the bridge between the old and the new. And this is something that we're going to receive in the kingdom. And that new covenant, that new agreement is going to be established with us in the kingdom. You know? Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not said the Lord Jehovah so like the seventh verse also says you know if that the way that the first covenant was set up you know was you know without fault and the fault was not with the covenant itself but with us then there should be no need for a second one right because it was us that was something wrong with there's nothing wrong with the laws, the strategic commands of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem, because they are perfect, man. You know, if these things can be obtained, can be basically obtained in a, in a perfect manner, it will be so much better, man. But we, we in our daily life right now are also struggling to keep, you know, certain things as well, man. You know, so it's us that the Heavenly Father finds fault with, man. But verse 9 says, it's not going to be the same way that the Heavenly Father made an agreement with us, you know, in Mount Sinai, basically, man. Because what happened in Mount Sinai, we still had that flesh that had a tendency to do evil. But we was given the laws, statutes, and commandments, you know, to read them and then to make sure that we would not transgress them. But the way that the Heavenly Father is going to do it, you know, in the future, you know, He is going to put those laws or statutory commandments within us and basically force us to be able to keep them to 100%. Verse 10, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord Jehovah. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. Yeah, because the Heavenly Father had a certain amount a certain moment in time, as we read the book of Hosea, the Heavenly Father said, they shall be no more people to me, man. But in the land where they have been basically, uh, in the land of our captivity, basically, you know, which, which basically is right now, we would remember the Heavenly Father, you know, and, 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 and we would be yet again the people towards Yahweh Shem Yahshai, man. But that would only happen through our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, through whom, we are adapted back to the Heavenly Father, man. You know? Verse 11, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord Jehovah, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. So we're all gonna, you know, know the Heavenly Father, man. Know what He is about, you know? Know His ways, know His laws, man. Keep His laws. You know, to 100%, man. 
you know, so I want to read a little bit in Exodus because, you know, it spoke about, you know, the covenant that was made with our forefathers, you know, when the Heavenly Father took us out of Egypt. So here's Exodus chapter 19, verse 1, which reads, Moses on Sinai, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and were pitched in the wilderness and there Israel came before the mount. So like, and Moses went up unto the Most High and the Lord Jehovah called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, the agreement, you know, the agreement that we made with the Heavenly Father to keep His ways, to keep His laws, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. But it says, if we will obey his voice and keep his covenant, man. So that was the agreement. Well, we still, you know, had that wicked heart within us, man. <laughs> like, yeah. And ye should be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, which goes into being separate, set apart. You know, we are, you know, the only nation that the Heavenly Father is actually directly dealing with. You know, all these other nations, of course, they are created by the Heavenly Father. But the Heavenly Father is not dealing with them like He's dealing with us because we are set apart. We are chosen, the chosen nation. That's why we are called Yashur Allah, He, Prince of the Power. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You know? So, that is the way that the Heavenly Father at, at first made that covenant, man. But now he's going to make the second one, second covenant, you know, <clears throat> verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord Jehovah. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord Jehovah, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, you know, so how the Heavenly Father is going to change things is by changing us, you know, so this is uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 22, which reads, Israel to be renewed for his namesake, you know, so we are going to, you know, be put back in a rightful place, and the Heavenly Father is going to change us, man, so that the name Yahweh can be magnified upon the earth again. You know, so that these nations that are now very proud, you know, and have us under subjection, you know, shall be fearful towards Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and the nation of Israel, man. So this is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 22. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus said the Lord Yahweh power, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. You know, so actually what the Heavenly Father is doing, he is basically, you know, uh, uh, bringing his promise to pass, man. The promise that he made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is bringing that, you know, to pass, man. And he is going to magnify his name yet again. You know, because we basically, you know, put the Heavenly Father to shame by, by, by how we have, you know, been acting, you know, upon this earth, man. Verse 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, by transgressing the laws. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord Jehovah, said the Lord Jehovah power, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. You know, Heavenly Father is going to basically, uh, um, uh, set us up again man, and clean us from our filthy ways. Verse 24 For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. 
So Heavenly Father is going to take us from all the countries where we have been scattered and put us back into the land of Israel, man. You know? And the reason that we are in all these other countries is because, you know, the transgression of the law, statute, commandments, you know, resulted in the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Leviticus chapter 26 coming upon our people, man. You know, which, which also mentioned that we will be scattered, you know, amongst the four corners of the earth. You know, verse 25, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So the Heavenly Father is going to cleanse us, man. You know, He's going to pardon all our iniquities, and He's going to make us perfect. You know, and we shall be no more as a nation, you know, serve idols, man. Serve, serve these false gods, man. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a hard flesh. So that stony heart represents the law of such commandments that we receive, you know, from from uh, from the Heavenly Father through Moses on Mount Sinai. You know, because on those tablets, which was made out of stone, you know, commandments were written, man. But that heart of flesh represents us, you know, being a hundred percent, you know, changed by the Heavenly Father and keep the law such commandments, man, perfectly to a T. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You know? So the Heavenly Father is gonna force us to keep his judgments. You know, and his statutes, man. You see? Verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your power. <laughs> you know? So we're going to be set back up again, man. And that is something that is happening slowly but surely. You know, up until that point, man. You know, right now, through the spirit and power of Yabashim Yosha, our people are being slowly but surely gathered, man. You know, but there are also some other minor things that I want to touch upon, and that is, you know, the people that want to say, like, you know, uh, how the nation of Israel has transgressed, you know, and, and things like that. Therefore, the promises are not in effect no more. But this is Galatians chapter 3. And let me start at verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of man, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disnulleth or added thereto. You know, so basically it was a covenant that we as a nation agreed upon, you know, uh, uh, um, or basically it all started with the forefather Abraham, you know, who received, you know, the promises as well, you know, and, and with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, eventually with, with the nation of Israel, which Jacob's name was changed to Israel, you know, was the covenant made, you know, but uh, we as a nation confirmed it, you know, and then nothing can be changed, man, especially because we made it with a Heavenly Father, you know, who is, uh, like it also says in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17, something. Yeah, man. <coughs> this is Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 13, it says, For when the most time made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Yeah, so back in the days, uh, Making an oath was very respectable. You know, if someone would basically say he would make an oath, they would be like, okay, you know, I believe you. Because back in the day, the people knew, man. The people knew that there was consequences for not keeping your oath, man. You know, nowadays, people swear loosely, man. You know? So that would be the end of strife back in them days. But verse 17, we're in the most high willing, more abundantly to show unto... The heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, man. 
that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the Most High to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us? So the Heavenly Father basically he made a promise which he cannot break, man. You know, he swore by his own name, man. You know, when he made that agreement with the forefather, man. But because it trickles down from Abraham Isaac to Jacob, it also, you know, pertains to us, man. You know, and, that, and, and that's basically what we hold fast on to, man. You know, this is Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he said, not anti seeds as of many. Because our forefather Abraham, he had many children, but only the blessing would come through Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. You know, um, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Yahushai. And this I say that the covenant was confirmed before the Most High in Yahushai. The law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So before we before we received the law of the commandments, you know, in Mount Sinai through through Moses, which the Heavenly Father gave unto Moses to declare unto us. The promise was already made to our forefather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. So, us breaking the commandments can never do away, you know, with the promise that was made unto our people, man. You know, verse 18, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but the most I gave it to Abraham by promise. You know, and that is the way it is set up, man. You know, if you promise someone, you know, something without having anything in return, then you cannot come back you know, to it later and say, yeah, you know, you, um, I say it, you, uh, 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 you can only get it now uh, uh, by doing something for me. That's not, uh, that's not the case. Man. That's not the case. <clears throat> um, let me jump down to verse 23, which reads, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. So before Yahweh Shai came and, you know, that inheritance can only be inherited through, you know, the faith of Yahweh Shai, you know, the faith of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, we only had the law, you know, but later it was revealed that only through faith we could have access, you know, back to the Heavenly Father and, you know, the obtaining of the inheritance and the promises, you know. That's why it also says that only those things can be obtained through our faith, the Yahweh Shai, you know, unto them to believe, man. Verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shai, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under our schoolmaster. Yeah, so basically, you know, what the law did is it taught us righteousness, man. You know, but we could never obtain righteousness, but through Yahweh Shai, man. You know why? Because it is Yahweh Shai that justifies us before the Heavenly Father. You know, that's the point. You know? So like, yeah. You know? So this is the Psalms chapter um, 105, verse 8. He had remembered his covenant forever. So the Heavenly Father made a covenant with us, you know, and, 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 and <laughs> is never, you know, going to be done away with. The words which he commanded to a thousand generations, basically everlasting, man. It's such a big, big number that is going to be everlasting, man. Because truth be told, you know, what is a generation? You know? Like, um, let's say 30 years. There will be 30,000 years. Well, the creation in itself, you know, is not even that old, man. So, guess what? It's such a big number that cannot even be obtained because we're already going to be in the kingdom having obtained that which was promised, man. But verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his owed unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So we, we have the covenant, we have the promises, you know, 
Verse 11, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. So we're going to receive our land back, man. You know, it's only a matter of time. You know, but the point of this video is that new covenant that the Heavenly Father is going to make with us in the future, man. And right now we're in that in-between phase in which we are waiting, you know, for the kingdom to come, man. You know, in which every single Israelite is going to be in his right mind. You know, and, you know, of course, a lot of our people are going to die, but they will come back in the kingdom, man. They will come back in the kingdom and then be righteous. You know, some shall wake up to everlasting shame, you know, understanding what they have done, you know, in this, in the old world, basically, you know. But this is Hebrews chapter 8 and 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayed a wretched old is ready to vanish away. So yeah, so it's about to be time for that old covenant to be done away with. And that new covenant, you know, uh, uh, to take its place, man. You know, and only the Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai is, is, is basically, you know, our, our protection right now, man. You know, for that in-between period in which we are, you know, still breaking the law up until this day and age, man. But he is the one that, that makes us righteous with the Heavenly Father. You know, so with that, I do hope and pray, you know, that this video was edifying. And with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, to the great millstone, and teach from rule well. And Shalom to the sinister Akim for the shoof interferences.